This wave of globalization has wiped out totally our middle class. Of all the kind of rhetoric of this year's campaign, uh, this is the one issue that's probably most effective. Every night, turn on the TV, they say, buy this product, buy that product. Well, if they want us to buy these products, maybe they better start manufacturing those products in Ohio and America. Nobody's kind of spoken up for trade and for the benefits of trade. It, it's not a stupid deal. I mean, it, it's, <laughs> it's really, really not. Free trade took a beating this election cycle with all major party candidates blaming bad trade policies for the loss of manufacturing jobs and the decline of the middle class. NAFTA is the worst trade deal maybe ever signed anywhere. I will stop any trade deal that kills jobs or holds down wages. And it is part of the race to the bottom. The top target of all this trash talk was the North American Free Trade Agreement, also known as NAFTA a bipartisan deal that removed all trading barriers between the U.S., Canada, and Mexico. In the 20 years since NAFTA, economists agree that it's had an overall positive effect on the economy and its increased prosperity in all three participating countries. And nowhere is this seen more than in the state of Texas. We came to Austin in the headquarters of Texas Monthly to talk to senior editor Erica Greeter about NAFTA and why free trade is getting such a bum rap. In a sense, it's because free trade has worked so well, right? It's because we've seen over the past 30 years an 80% reduction in extreme global poverty. Mexico's consumer market is a lot bigger now because of NAFTA. Its labor market is you know, big too, but it's getting smaller. So we're not actually seeing net migration from Mexico at this point because Mexico's economy is doing better. But that kind of also means that you're seeing economic growth outpacing growth in the United States. And of course, you have areas that do feel uh, dislocated by globalization. It's not really NAFTA, it's more the growth of China as a global player in the economy, automation, technological change, but it's e easy to kind of point to NAFTA. A lot of the criticism you've been hearing about NAFTA, it's nothing new. Back in the 90s when the legislation was being debated, Ross Perot famously said, Now, when you've got a seven to one wage differential between the United States and Mexico, you will hear the giant sucking sound. No, there's a political lesson, a there's a business lesson. lesson. But a lot of these predictions haven't come true. Regional trade has increased from roughly 290 billion in 1993 to more than 1.1 trillion in 2016. And while foreign direct investment in Mexico has increased from 15 billion to over 100 billion in that same time, U.S. exports under NAFTA have tripled, and Canada and Mexico now account for one third of U.S. exports, according to the Congressional Research Service. Depending on how you do the analysis, maybe like one in five jobs in Texas are somehow related to trade, to our globalized economy. I mean, Texas and Mexico have changed because of NAFTA, I and mean, you've seen an evolution in both economies. That's been good for them both. So there's this kind of demagogish concept that life is a zero-sum game, that, you know, the economy is primitive, that you take jobs from one country and move them to another country, and then there's like an, a finite number of jobs to go around. Um, Texas is proof that's not the case. Thanks to NAFTA, Texas has led the country in exports for over the last decade, and the state's GDP went from $444 billion in 1993 to over $1.6 trillion today. But even though the state is benefiting, the constant nagging of free trade is turning even traditional supporters against deals like NAFTA. A University of Texas poll found that 51% of Texas Republicans, that's right, Republicans, think international trade deals have harmed the U.S. The numbers out of Texas reflect the nation at large, where only 48% of Americans think free trade has been good for the economy, according to the latest Pew Research polling. If this sentiment persists, then that's going to be adverse for us. I mean, think about things like the opening of trade ties with Cuba, the expansion of the Panama Canal. We're going to have a lot of economic growth in Texas in the next coming years because of trade. So if there's a hostility in Texas to trade, that's not going to work out too well for us. The debate will continue over NAFTA's legacy. And as Donald Trump gets ready to take over the presidency and the protectionist idea spreads, how do we speak up for free trade? It's funny because, you know, of all the kind of rhetoric of this year's campaign, uh, this is the one issue that's probably most affected, the one issue where people's views might have changed in a sort of simplistic way to be, you know, I was pro-trade, but now I think maybe trade's bad or we should, you know, we shouldn't make stupid deals. But, like, it, it's not a stupid deal. I mean, it, it's, <laughs> it's really, really not. We have also seen that communities can adjust, think about like Pittsburgh, um, and how much it's evolved and changed and now it's in a much stronger place than it used to be. I think that we should be looking at places like Pittsburgh, states like Indiana, which has done pretty well. It's possible for things to get better even if things change.